This telescoping tube elevator from Offset Robotics could be a game changer for your robot design, but only if it's fast and strong enough for competition. Okay, wicked quick, you're looking at a cycle time of getting your lift system right is critical, and choosing the wrong one costs you time, money, and performance on the field. I'm Brogan Pratt, and as a coach of FTC National Champions and Inspire Award winning teams, I've seen firsthand how the right mechanisms can define a season. Today, I'm going to run you through a series of benchmark tests on this offset robotics kit. We'll test its speed, lifting capacity with a few different motors, so you can get a clear, data-driven picture of its performance and decide if it's the right solution for your team. So before we get into testing, a quick note on transparency. Offset Robotics sent this kit to me over to evaluate. As always, my analysis and opinions are completely my own. My goal is to give you honest information that you need to be able to make an informed decision for your own projects. If you want my full detailed review of this kit, I've got it linked down in the description below. So let's take a look at the testing setup quick here. For every single test, I'm going to be using a brand new fully charged 12 volt, uh, 3000 milliamp nickel metal hydride battery. This runs into a standard switch that goes into a two times 30 amp robo claw controller that's being controlled by a, a circuit Python board so we can do our timings. Uh, this is what is actually going to control our motor move up and down. And this will also give a screen output for us so we can see how long it took for it to uh, extend, retract, and then full cycle times over our tests. On the motor itself, I have a motor encoder running so we can know when we've reached our top and bottom limits. And then as far as design for our setup here, I have a quick dual pulley system set up here. One for our extension string, one for our retraction string. Our retraction string is twice the length of our extension string because this setup is cascade strung and one of them needs to be uh, twice as long as the other because our extension string is half the length of our retraction string. And one thing I forgot to mention is that the retraction spool is 32 millimeters in diameter while our extension spool is 16 millimeters in diameter. Let's go ahead and get a baseline here with no load on a 1150 RPM motor. Okay, wicked quick, you're looking at a cycle time of about 0.7 seconds. Now, each one of these little weights weighs about 500 grams, so we're going to test in 500 gram increments. So with that baseline out of the way, let's put 500 grams on the system and uh, see what that does. Now, I'm going to strap this on here because this has a habit of flying off. All right. And we're looking at about 0.8 seconds of 500 grams, and I actually don't like that. I think that's going to destroy something. So let's see if we can't hang the next one up a little bit higher. Okay, got a kilogram loaded up here. <laughs> a little bit better of a system here. So we'll see how this goes. Pretty solid. We're looking at about 0.97 on a cycle time. Let's try ahead and go up to a kilogram and a half. And this is typically where things like to uh, bottom out on these systems. All right, we've got a kilogram and a half loaded up. Let's go ahead and see what this looks like when it's all put together. I think I'm only going to test that one once. We'll say that's at 1.1 cycle time. You definitely should not be running uh, one and a half kilograms on this, I would say. But provided your end effector is less than a kilogram, 1150 RPM motor is uh, definitely doable on this system. And this thing's coming down hard and it doesn't seem to have affected anything on its uh, actual extension here. So let's get started with the 435 RPM motor. Now I want to note that uh, the offset team says that this is designed for a 1150 motor, not a 435 motor. Uh, but we're going to test this one just for sake of redundancy in our testing here. So let's go ahead and get a baseline on a 435. And we're looking at an average cycle time of 1.58, 1.57. Let's hold up 500 grams and see where we get with that. Got 500 grams on here. Let's go ahead and get a few cycles in. And we're sitting at about 1.6 seconds on a cycle time on a gram. Let's go ahead and load up a kilogram. See what we get with a kilogram. All 
We're looking about 1.79 as a cycle time on a kilo. Let's go up to a kilo and a half. Okay, we got a kilo and a half loaded up. Again, I will remind you, this is not actually designed for this much weight. So let's take a look at what we get. We're going to run that twice. We're looking at 1.8 as a cycle time. Overall, some pretty impressive results. Again, keep in mind your performance may differ as the powering system is my own amalgamation of test documents and the parts that I had on hand. If you want my full detailed review of this kit, I've got it linked down in the description below. And believe me, this kit's not without its flaws, but for teams that need a rotating linear lift that's both rigid and light, this is a compelling option. It takes a lot of complex machining and tuning off your plate provided you can design and manufacture your own motor integration. The team at Offset Robotics was also kind enough to offer a discount for my viewers. If you decide this kit is right for you, using the link in the description will get you 5% off, and it's a great way to support the channel. I'm genuinely excited to see how they build on what is already a very strong start for this product. Okay, wicked quick, you're looking at a cycle time of about 0.7 seconds.